ask and you shall receive, friends. Kind of. So about, let's say, oh, Jesus Christ, nearly two years ago, my God. I was uh, working at Walmart. I was um, a deli slicer, deli meat slicer. I was the guy that you go up to the counter and it's like, hey man, give me some cheese or some and slash or some meat. And you know, I'd wait, I'd be like, hey, you want this cheese? No, I don't want that cheese. You want this one? No. You know, they eventually come to a conclusion. Hey, let me have this one. I, I don't want you. Put it on the little slicer. I cut it. You want this? You got it. That's what I did. I was the deli meat slicer. It wasn't like an official title or anything. It was kind of just whatever the hell. That, and I was also, I think it was called the hot food service thing. Uh, I was both the deli slicer and I was the guy who would, there'd be a, a this display case, right? With all this hot food that was prepared at the beginning of every day. You know, like chicken nuggets and beans and mashed potatoes and corn, stuff like that. From the earth I rise. So I was working there for about four to five months. It was about like an eight to nine hour shift. Usually it would go about 10 hours. And you know, I'd get there, do a couple hours, and then we'd take a break uh, halfway through for lunch. We'd have to like clock out, right? Because they don't want it. They want to like scrounge as many scraps together. That multi-billion dollar company wants to scrounge as many scraps together. So they tell you to, to clock out for an hour and then you got to go and you know, have lunch or do whatever the hell it is that you're doing, go to the bathroom, yada, yada. So what would happen is I would, uh, when lunchtime would come around, I would clock out and I would, go to the fresh, the hot meat, like hot, <laughs> hot meat. Nice and hot, hot and spicy meat. <laughs> hot food area, right? The, the thing where people would ask, like, I want chicken nuggets put into a box and then I'd, I'd, I'd print out a label based on the certain, you know, specification of what they wanted, right? So say if they wanted some chicken nuggets, just throw a ballpark figure out there, right? I'd print out a thing for like $7, slap that on, give it to them, then they'd bring it up to the, the check-in area and then they'd, you know, beep it out and be like, that's how much you pay. Insert cash or select payment type. So, on an average, say, nine to eight hour shifts, which usually it would go in like 10 hours, uh, halfway through the day, we'd get to, uh, everyone would have their own specific time in which they clock out. So mine was about like one or 2 p.m. Um, we'd get to, I'd get to that point on a day, I would clock out, time for lunch, right? Or going to the bathroom, whatever it is you gotta do. Then I would go to the hot, like the hot foods, right? The foods that they would prepare at the beginning of the day. Now, here's something that you gotta remember. <sighs> and this sucks, right? The hot foods, they would prepare it at the end of the day. They'd go throughout the day, they'd try to sell as much as they could, get it out of the way. And usually there would be leftovers. In fact, there would be a considerable amount of leftovers. They would instruct us at the end of the day to take all of that food, food that's totally good to be eaten, they tell us to bag it up and to throw it all away, just to waste it. Right? I'm guessing that's just how they control the prices, right? Otherwise you can just give it out to people for free. I mean, if you did that, there'd be no incentive for them to go and buy it, right? Remember that. So I would go to the fresh food stuff. I would take some, whatever it is that I'm looking for, fill it into a box, I'd close it up. I would print out a label that would be a few dollars off from the actual cost of however much that was put in there. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit! So say if I got like $10 worth of, you know, that of food that they would price to be $10, right? That's not the actual value of the thing. They could probably get it made for like cents. Point is they want as much money as possible. So I print out a label and say if like the, I, I print out a label, put it, slap it on the thing. And say if like the overall price of how much I was taking was like $10, right? I would print out a label for $8 so that I would only have to pay $8 for it, right? Cause I'm, you know, it's to save some money out of the, the, the money that they're paying me so that I can give back to them because the point is to make as much money as possible, right? On, like, very sporadically, I'd only do it, like, here and there throughout, like, I'd say I was only there for, like, four to five months. So, like, maybe once or twice here and there, like, every couple weeks, I would go to the fresh food. I would print out the label on very slight discount, just a few dollars off, just a few. And then sometimes I would like buy an extra snack for like its full price in the actual Walmart grocery area. So I would do that. I'd take it back to my car, I'd eat, you know, throughout that lunch hour duration. And then I'd come back and then I'd work the rest of the day. So here's the thing. They had been watching me do that for like three months, let's just say, on various spy cameras they have placed Everywhere. If you're if you're familiar with Walmart, you know that these motherfuckers are watching every every two goddamn seconds. They would watch me do this for months back to back until suddenly, say like four months in, 
right? And I've only been there for like five months at most before I ended up getting fired. I, I did the average thing. I went through my work day. I uh, went to the lunch hours. I clocked out, got my food, went out to the car, finished it, came back. My uh, manager at the time, which here's another thing. People would cycle in so so goddamn quickly. People would come in, they'd leave, and, and I was there for four to five months, right? And in that span of time, I was there for the longest out of every single person who was in that particular area, right? The deli, fresh meats area. Because people were always getting fired, people were always leaving, people were always like, damn, I'm getting uh, the shit abused out of me. I need to leave for my mental health sake. And reasonably so, Walmart is very evil. They're, they're just awful, awful people, and it's a terrible business. I came in after the lunch was finished. I was going back to my station and this manager who wasn't the manager that I had before, the other manager, there was like two, literally two of them coming in and out. Um, so not at the same time. One came in, then they left. Another one came in, then they left. And then a third guy came in. This guy was a goddamn parasite. He was some ugly fat dude who really took pride in, in, in you know, exploiting his, his workers, right? He would, he would try to, to really get, he would load more and more work onto the laborers as much as he could just because, you know, he's, I mean, why else would he be in that position? Why else would they hire him in order to get him to, you know, wrangle the slaves? So I was walking back to my station and I remember he came over and was like, hey man, uh, could you follow me real quick? I was like, I learned my lesson at this time. Don't, don't do that. They're going to try to ambush you. And that's exactly what it was. I was like, oh, okay, sure. Blah, blah. So I followed him, right? You know, weaving in and out through the, the, the passages, the, the seeing all the depressed fat people going about their, their day. And they brought me to this back area where I came across two more fat people. <laughs> it's a recurring theme in America. Uh, they were sitting at their little, little desks. He kind of just like came in real quick, like me behind him, brought me into the room. He's like, okay. And then he just backed away and then closed the door behind him. And then they were kind of just sitting there, right? Just in the corner. Or not in the corner, they were at their little desks, right? Hey, have a seat, please. I was like, all right. So I had a seat. I sat down. And then what followed was like 10 to 15 minutes of them acting all friendly, right? Oh, hey, what's your name? What are you doing? You know, what are you looking forward to doing with your life? And, you know, how you doing? All that type of stuff. I was like, you know, doing the huge. I was, I was naive at the time. I spoke to them like they were people and I really shouldn't have. Uh, I was cordial though, which played in my favor, right? Because they were trying to gather as much information to, to try to fuck people over, because that's the point. Uh, it's punching down on, on small people. Uh, that's just how it works. 10 to 15 minutes into the talk, let's just say the discussion, it then immediately shifted to an interrogation. Suddenly, uh, they asked me, it's like, hey, what do you want to do with your life? I'm just like, you know, I want to entertainment industry. I want to try to make films. I want to, you know, write screenplays. I want to make music, act, do all those things. And then suddenly the tone of the entire thing shifted. There was one lady, one fat lady, one fat dude. He was just sitting in the corner doing his own thing, trying to act decent. He was the one that wasn't as kind of confrontational. He was kind of just in his little corner, like, hey, blah, 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 that, that, that type of guy. And then the girl, the fat girl, she suddenly shifted be like, okay, well, if you want to do that type of stuff, maybe you shouldn't be stealing. And I was like, excuse me? Suddenly they sprung the question. She's like, so how much did you steal from us? And I was like, I, I don't know, what, what, are, you, what are you saying? Uh, you know, because I, I was literally like, kind of dumbfounded. And then I realized at that point, I was like, oh, they meant the fresh food that I tried to buy on a few dollars off. Yeah, no, they were following me for that entire however many months, like two or three months. The few times in which I do it, they would count up the individual times in which I would do that. And then they would document it, right? They came to me with uh, with papers, right? She was just like, how much did you steal? And I was like, I don't I don't know what you're talking. So I just pulled the number out of my ass. I was like, they, they clearly know what's going on, right? They showed me the papers, right? They showed me the, the GoPro CCTV photos of me just checking out stuff at the, the, the counter. They're like, how much did you steal? And I was like, I don't know what you're talking. I was like, give me a number right now. It better be close to the actual number. And I was like, a ah, hundred, $150, I don't know. And then, the lady got up, well, struggled to get up, of course, she's just fat, right? <sighs> then she left the room, ran out, came back five minutes later, in that small span of time, I kind of had a little little banter with the other guy. He was trying to come off as friendly. Uh, he wasn't confrontational, but he was, he, he was one of the slave uh, leaders, right? Some of the slave wranglers, so he wasn't, he wasn't on my side. 
point is she came back five minutes later with a bunch of papers, right? They printed out photos of the, like the pictures of me and, and all the transaction history. The number that they gave me was just some random shit that they pulled out of their ass at that time. I'm not really sure how they got to that number, right? But point is it was less than the amount that I gave them. They were like, this is how much you took. And then they showed me a, uh, a paper with all of the individual things that they were, that they accused me of stealing, right? It wasn't actually reflective of what like I took. It was just an amount that they pulled out of their ass at that moment, just to intimidate me. Yeah, at that moment I was like, oh, huh, damn. So she was like, yeah, it's about $100. You're, it's good that you gave me that amount because otherwise you'd be lying, right? She was like accusing, like she, she was telling me about other people as if to sort of like ease me to get me to like say more about how other people would steal like up to like tens of thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars over years and years of time. And almost as if a, to be like, hey, you know, what you did wasn't that bad, but you're still gonna get in trouble for it. So turns out that the amount wasn't mainly from the fresh food. See, months uh, prior, they gave me this little, little scanner device thingy where essentially you scan the little thing on the item and then there's this app on your phone that tells you like where in the store it is and how much it is. There were these little dipping cups like ranch, buffalo, honey mustard. I took the scanner thing, I scanned those, nothing showed up. It wasn't in the logs, it wasn't in the, the thing, it didn't give me a price. So I thought nothing of that. I was like, okay, I guess I'll take a few of these. Essentially that, those little dippy cups were 75 cents each. And they add, those added up exponentially because you know, I, I like my sauces. <sighs> I'm a condiment man. They essentially just added that up and, and added that to the overall amount that they accused me of taking. They gave me that amount and I was just like, oh, well shit. Um, I got real quiet at that point because you know, I never really been in that instance in my life before. Uh, especially over something rather so petty. We went through all that. She gave me a piece of paper. She wanted me to write down like a confession or something. Then she got up and she's like, all right, so here's what's gonna happen next. We're gonna call the police. We're going to press charges and you're gonna have to stay here and we're gonna have to figure all that stuff out. Yeah, they went out, they called a police officer. Police officer came in into the, the room and he was kind of just like, you know, they were explaining stuff to him. He didn't talk to me, because you know, American police, they don't really gather information. They kind of just go off what other people say, right? If you call somebody on 911 and you tell people, tell them that something's happening, they're gonna believe that. They're not gonna try to go out of their way to, to gain information. Why do you think pranksters are always able to do those drinking beer in public prank, right? They walk into a cop and they drink the, 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 the beer and then the cop's like, what the hell are you doing? The cop doesn't be like, take the thing and be like, oh, it's non-alcoholic, it says it right here. Investigation work. Yeah, no, they're American police. You can't expect anything better. Came in, he kind of sat down, they gave him all the papers, he went through, and he's kind of just like, going through all the transaction history, and he's just like, so did he did he steal this? He's like, no, 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 he paid for that. He just didn't pay the amount that we wanted him to pay. And he's like, oh, okay. Did he steal this? What does this mean? He's like, no, no, he didn't take, he bought those. He bought that, and that, and that, and he bought this, and he bought that. But this, he didn't buy the amount that, that we wanted him to pay for. And he's kind of just like, oh. All right, you can tell that this guy was like, he's like, really? Like, you're wasting my fucking time. <laughs> they said they were gonna press charges. Nothing really happened afterwards. They were kind of just like, the cop was like, all right, I guess, yeah, you're good to go. Uh, they told me I was fired on the spot, so I kind of just left at that moment. The cop was like, you're good. Nothing really comes afterwards. And I was like, all right, goodbye, I'll see ya. So I was fired from Walmart, ended up having to get another job uh, eventually, and then nothing, I didn't hear anything of it, nothing until literally a year later, an entire year later, I got something in the mail. It was a warrant for my arrest. They wanted me to go in, they wanted me to do fingerprints to get a mugshot, and I had to go to court, to, to community court. Went in, did all that stuff, came in at the right time. Uh, I, I During the doing my fingerprints and, and you know I went to the police precinct we sat there for nearly an hour then some guy came out he walked me to the room he's trying to like ask me questions he was kind of just like so what are you in here for I was like ah just some stuff I did not I learned at that point I was like yeah don't tell these guys anything they're not there to help they're there to enforce the, the law and I learned at that moment uh that apparently uh they treat larceny as a more serious offense than say like assault so say had I gotten into a fight or like say if like 
I beat somebody up over at Walmart, or if, they, if there was just some, some harm inflicted, they would treat that as less serious than, than taking a little bit of money. Yeah, that's their priorities. So, went in, did the fingerprints, got the mugshot, was talking to the guy, doing some banter. He, we got along pretty well, and that's kind of what you got to do in order to get them to not, you know, try to, like, full force on you, right? Because they're very emotional. So, they gave me a court date, and I learned at that point, when he showed me all the paperwork and everything, the amount that was actually taken, or that I actually took overall, from, you know, the... Because I paid the amount... I paid... For the food, I just didn't pay as much as they wanted me to, right? Just a few dollars off and they added those up over time, including the, the little dipping sauces for 75 cents. The amount was $50. It was, it was a fraction of what they accused me of at that time, a year ago. I think it was like a week or two later, I went into the community court. I, you know, stood in front of a judge the, the went over to like the lawyer or something. He was like talking and he's like, you know, uh, they didn't really give me much information. They're kind of just like, all right, here's what you're going to do, this and that. They're just going to give you some community service days. So we sat in court, surrounded by a bunch of other poor people who were there for, for very mild infractions, who, you know, pe poor people who would be living in almost entire states away that they would tell to, to somehow go out of their way, take time out of their day that they spend accumulating scraps in order to barely survive in this piece of country so that they can come and sit in court and, you know, get charged with whatever it is. It was mainly just people, b very basic stuff, right? People who were just, like, would have restraining orders against them or, like, very basic minor stuff. So, I was in the court and then they called up my name, went up to the stand like this, and the judge was kind of just like, yada yada, this and that, larceny, fourth degree or whatever it is, or sixth degree, I think. It was the most minor, very basic uh, infraction. They were kind of like, all right, uh, three days community service. There you go. Don't do this again. You know better. And the, the, the lawyer at least said that for me. He's like, you know, he learned from his lesson. He's, he's never going to do something this, this fucking terrible ever again. It was such an awful crime so, of trying to receive a slight discount at a place that I was working for. After that, I ended up going home. And literally the next week, I just had to do three back-to-back -back, uh, days of community service. Now, one of the things that the community, when I was at the, the community court, there was this one lady... Somebody that uh, my family member knew. Uh, in fact, I had a bit of reassurance from my family member because they also were part of the law in some some capacity. They they were a cop and they knew a lot of these people and these people knew my name. They they knew my my last name. So that I guess maybe that had some effect on the on their attitude towards me. But there was one lady. Oh man, it was it was so dumb. Like it was a perfect reflection of the standards of this place, right? So we were just sitting next to each other. I was sitting here. And she was kind of just like, you know, she's talking to me about stuff, trying to give me some sort of like diatribe, is that the word? Some sort of like pep talk about ethics and morals, right? She was giving me some, she was just like, you know, what you did like that, that's not okay. You know, you got to obey the law. You got, you can't be doing such, such selfish and, and really bad stuff like this. You know, this is so, so terrible. And she kind of, I was just like, I wasn't really taking it. See, I was like, you guys are kind of overreacting. She was, she went into this, uh, this story about her, her relative who he was faced with some, the same, like semi same try. He essentially was just, he was like a 22 year old who snuck some alcohol into some concert and he got caught there. Right. So they were kind of just like, they caught him. They both issued a trespass for him. So he could never go back. And he had to do a bunch of community service. And she was sitting there trying to describe to me. It's like, you know, he broke the rules. That's not okay. The problem wasn't that he did something wrong. The problem is that he broke the rules. And the rules are not designed in a way to, to, to enforce right or wrong. It's just about whatever the rules are defined at that certain place in time. That's why you're always getting all sorts of people who are getting thrown in jail for very basic drug infractions for the longest time. The point is, it's a system that is designed to, to siphon people's life from them. Because that's the way that it is. And she wanted to sit there on the high road saying like, Hey, you know, you can learn from this. You can do better in the future. Right? Know your fucking place, poor goddamn slave. That's essentially what it was. So, she was essentially trying to describe as if, like, she knew what she was talking... Like, she didn't see the problem. She was too busy doing what she what was expected of her. She saw her, her relative, somebody that she knew for however long, as sort of just like a, a criminal. And why? Because this guy, what... He snuck alcohol into some concert. 
when he was 21, all because he wanted to drink while at the concert. He got a trespass, and I also got a, a, a trespass from Walmart. I, 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 couldn't, I can't go back there anymore. Uh, ever. Forever. Permanent. So, I essentially had to go in, do three days of community service, which almost felt like after-school detention. I just, we showed up on a certain time in the day, we just did some basic stuff. I'd say 30% of the day, which started at like 8 and ended around like 1 or 2, was essentially just like actual like community service, right? They treat community service as if it's a punishment instead of acting, because community service is good, so they're not gonna frame it as if it's good, they're gonna try to treat it as if it's a punishment. We, the, the community service mainly just entailed like, you know, food service stuff, right? Bringing food onto a truck over to like some, some church or something, or like moving food, like picking up trash on the side of the road or something. 70% of the community service, quote unquote, was sitting in a car and waiting. That was it. It wasn't anything, it wasn't actual, like, anything productive or beneficial. It was just mindless nonsense. Yeah. I, um, got issued a, tr a trespass for, uh, for Walmart, and I can't ever return there. Oh, it's such a, it's such a terrible thing, you know? Can't get my, uh, my, my low-quality food. But the biggest thing of all that was, like, that was food they throw away. At the end of the day, we're supposed to bag up the fresh food and just throw it into the trash. The, the point is to deprive people. They do that with all their product. They say if like they they have some pajamas or something that maybe like a homeless person could use during the cold months. They, 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 they like rip it up, they tag it, and they throw it away so that nobody can get their hands on it so that they can control the, the price so they can enforce people to have to buy these things. Got a trespass to that place, can't ever go back. I think that's on my, my arrest, my, my record now, uh, the sixth degree larceny. Throughout the entire process, people were just doing crap that they were told because that's the way that the rules were defined. There wasn't any like context to like, in, in court, they didn't really contextualize it as in like, I bought the food. <laughs> I paid money for it. I just didn't pay the specific amount that they wanted. Instead of, instead of paying $10 for a thing that was priced $10, I paid eight or $9 for it. And they, they got me for that. And then they acted as if I was some um, selfish, petty, disgusting criminal that was worthy of being, you know, given, you know, something like community service really isn't a bad thing. Community service is good, but the point is to punish and to keep people in their place. So, yeah. Fuck Walmart.